What's going on filmmakers? I'm Alexander Don and today we are in this beautiful countryside where it's snowed and it's really freezing but we have a new lens on my Sony FX30. It's the new 7 Artisans 35mm cine lens with a T1.05 and we're gonna play with it and we're gonna shoot and see exactly how this lens looks. I'm gonna shoot everything at T1.05 because I'm really curious to see if this lens is sharp enough and if it's usable at T1.5. So without further ado, let's begin and have some fun with this lens. Alright, so now that you managed to see a little bit of footage coming out of this combo, I'm really curious to see if this lens works on my Sony FX3 as well. And if you follow me for a while, you know that I like to put Super 35 lenses on full frame cameras and oftentimes get incredible results. And so let's switch cameras and put this lens on the FX3 and see if it works on that camera as well. I'm honestly very impressed to see that this lens works on full frame as well even though it's a super 35 lens and it shouldn't work on full frame but as you can see it works really good without noticeable vignetting and if you watch my previous video where I tested the 25 millimeter you know that I put that on full frame as well and that had a little bit of vignetting going on but this one doesn't have a noticeable one going on I mean I've watched it on the small screen and I couldn't see a vignette. Maybe on the bigger screen there is one. So you would be the judge. Let me know in the comments if you see a noticeable vignette or not, or if you think this lens is usable on full frame. Now we're gonna go in the studio and I'm gonna put the two cameras side by side with some lens and see if you guys like the crop version or the full frame version more because I'm also very curious as well. One thing that I noticed between those two cameras while filming with the same lens was that keeping focus on a crop sensor was obviously way easier than with a full frame uh, camera because when you have a bigger sensor, the depth of field is shallower so it's quite harder to keep focus. Even right now, we are filming with it and if I move just a little bit, you can see I'm moving out of focus. So. So far, this lens is quite incredible. I really like it. I'm really happy that it works on full frame as well. Now, let's get back to the studio and do more controlled tests.
So after testing this lens inside the studio, I gotta be honest with you guys, I think this lens works really good on full frame as well. Even though this lens was made for a Super 35 sensor, I think it performs really good on a full frame camera. And I think this is very impressive because we're looking at a lens that is not expensive, it has cinema features, and it has amazing characteristics like a T1.05 and a super good minimal focus distance and it doesn't have focus breathing that much and it has nice flares going on so overall you're looking at a lens that is really interesting and really nice to use because keeping focus with this lens even though it's a T1.05 it's not impossible I managed to get some really good shots at T1.05 and to be honest, if you want to use a lens, everyone is so hyped nowadays on vintage lenses and I understand why they have amazing characteristics. But if you have an old vintage lens that works really bad, I would consider spending the same money on this lens and have amazing characteristics, have a really solid lens in your hand. And overall, you can buy a full set that shares the same characteristics because I tested the 25 millimeter as well and I've seen some um, similar um, characteristics between the two lenses like the flaring and other features like an incredible minimum focus distance and overall a really good sharpness. If you stop down the lens a little bit, you get a really sharp lens that looks quite correct I would say but if you want to get creative a little bit you go to t1.0 and you have this aberrations and uh, some really incredible depth of field I would say and overall to be honest I think I'm going to use this lenses more and more even on professional shoot because I was looking to get a cinema lens set that has a t1.5 or t1.4 because my DZO Vespit primes are t2.1 and in some situations the DZO Vespit primes are quite dark. So having the T1.05 on these lenses is absolutely incredible. You can shoot in the darkest places ever. I mean, even with the Sony a7S III or the FX3, you can bump the ISO to 12,800. And with these lenses, you can basically see in the dark. But the point is, I don't wanna use these lenses on T1.0 all the time. I just wanna have the benefit of knowing that I have a little bit of stop there that in case I don't have enough light, I can increase it and uh, I can it can save my shoot or something like that. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And if you liked how the footage looks on my videos, I just want to let you know that I color grade all my videos using my own LUTs and I have them on sale, link is in the description. And if you want to support this channel, I would be really happy if you purchase one of my LUTs so you could be having the same quality as I have or even better. That's it for now, guys. I'm Alexander Don and thanks a lot for watching. Peace.